Hello, my name is Ryan Pollock. I lead product marketing for DigitalOcean's infrastructure products. Thank you very much for joining this talk today. In this session, I'm going to review some of the use cases and benefits of our droplet virtual machines. I'll share a bit about the kinds of droplets that we offer today and how you might use them for both business and personal projects. I'll review some of our droplets key features and add-ons. I'll share some tips and tricks as to how you can better operate your droplets and uh, keep them secure. And finally, I'll close with a demo. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of a virtual machine, basically uh, here at DigitalOcean, we operate data centers, uh, 13 in total around the world. And in those data centers, we have racks of physical machines. Uh, and on those machines, we run a piece of software called Hypervisor. Uh, technically, it's the Linux kernel virtual machine that we use. And what this hypervisor does is it allocates the underlying physical resources on our machines uh, to guest operating systems that run on top of these machines. And when you go ahead and spin up a droplet, you can choose from uh, a number of popular Linux distributions, uh, such as Ubuntu, Fedora, and CentOS. Uh, so you spin up your machine. Uh, it usually takes under a minute. And uh, from that point forward, you go ahead and install any kind of software that you want on that machine. Uh, whether you want to run, uh, you know, programming language, frameworks, web servers, databases. Uh, we like to say that you can really do anything with your droplets. Uh, many of our customers come to us for things like audio and video processing, uh, certain types of machi machine learning jobs, uh, batch processing. Uh, you really can do just about anything you want uh, with our VMs. Now, there's many reasons that you might come to DigitalOcean and use our droplets. Uh, especially as compared to running systems on premise uh, or also uh, using utilizing VMs from a different cloud provider. Uh, you know, first and foremost, droplets are extremely cost effective. There's nothing to pay up front. Uh, you literally just pay as you go, sign up with your credit card, uh, and you'll be billed uh, by the hour just for the resources that you use. Uh, other key benefits to using droplets are that uh, our systems are extremely scalable. You can go from zero to hundreds of, hundreds of droplets uh, with just a couple clicks or, or a couple commands. Um, we have a team of dedicated professionals uh, working around the clock to keep your systems up and running. Uh, you know, our, our team will handle many aspects of security as well. So, uh, you know, from uh, securing the physical premises uh, to patching any vulnerabilities that are discovered. Uh, at both hardware and software layers, uh, our team is, is continuously working uh, to keep your system secure. Another key benefit to utilizing our droplets is uh, because you really don't have to do any of the physical pro procurement and setup of, uh, you know, data centers and whatnot, uh, your time to market is much faster and you can tap into uh, our global footprint of data centers with ease. Now, if you're new to DigitalOcean, uh, you know, it's, it's been about eight years since uh, our company started its journey, uh, originally with uh, a droplet that sort of became famous for being uh, as cheap as five dollars uh, for you to be able to, you know, to run servers in the cloud uh, quite easily as compared to some of the other alternatives at the time. Um, we became very popular with developers, uh, a whole lot of people doing personal projects. Uh, but nowadays, you know, our, our business has really evolved and we've introduced a, a broader portfolio of droplets that you can use for very serious production you know, business applications. Um, and we certainly still offer our very first droplet type. And today we call that the basic droplet. This is a, a VM that utilizes a shared CPU. Uh, this is part of why they're so inexpensive, starting at five dollars uh, a month. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the way this works is that, uh, you know, when you're running a, a basic droplet, there are other basic droplets from other customers on that same hypervisor uh, and, you know, therefore very resource efficient. Um, but your workloads, you know, they may feel the effects of uh, other basic droplets on that same hypervisor. Uh, and this sort of situation makes these droplets very well suited for uh, applications that are sort of bursty in their performance. Um, things like lower traffic web servers, blogs, uh, smaller databases, or development and testing environments. Uh, these are the sorts of situations that typically lend themselves best towards our basic droplets. Now, it was a few years back that we introduced a second type of droplet. This is a CPU-optimized droplet 
really aimed at workloads that uh, you know are going to be more CPU intensive uh, than they are reliant on other aspects of the of the uh, you know virtual machine type. Uh, these workloads, you know, maybe are, are continuous integration, continuous deployment, video encoding, certain kinds of machine learning, ad serving, uh, and then, you know, technically the reasons that uh, these sorts of applications run well on CPU optimized droplets are that uh, the, the ratio of the hardware uh, is about uh, two gigabytes of RAM per uh, dedicated virtual CPU, uh, and this sort, this sort of hardware specification uh, is really a good fit for those kinds of workloads. Now, for a somewhat broader portfolio of workloads, you might want to look at our general purpose droplets. Uh, these machines, sort of like CPU optimized, they feature dedicated CPUs, but they feature four gigabytes of RAM uh, for each vCPU. And, uh, you know, the, the sorts of applications that you might run on general purpose droplets are web servers that are, you know, medium or, or higher traffic servers, uh, more business kinds of applications, uh, e-commerce websites or, or medium and, and large size databases, uh, even certain kinds of enterprise software as a service run well on these general purpose droplets. Now, other kinds of workloads uh, might demand even more memory. Uh, this is, a, of course, the random access memory. Uh, that may be necessary when you're running, uh, you know, high performance NoSQL uh, or SQL databases or uh, caches like Redis that are, rely very much on uh, keeping keeping your, your data in memory. Uh, other kinds of uh, applications that perhaps run on a Java, Java virtual machine um, are very memory intensive. Uh, so th these sorts of applications can take advantage of the fact that our memory optimized droplets uh, have eight gigabytes of RAM per dedicated vCPU. The droplet that we most recently introduced is a storage optimized droplet. And the thing that really sets this apart is uh, that we give you extra storage and uh, I neglected to say that all of our droplet types, they feature uh, high performance uh, solid state drives uh, our, our storage optimized dro droplets actually feature uh, the NVMe uh, SSDs, which are which deliver even faster performance. And uh, basically, you get about 100, uh, 150 gigabytes of storage per dedicated vCPU with our storage optimized uh, droplets. Uh, I think they go up to about 4.7 gigabytes of storage uh, in total. And uh, these sort of hardware characteristics makes storage optimized droplets uh, particularly good fits for those very large NoSQL, SQL databases, uh, monitoring software that's going to collect, you know, a lot of time series data, um, other kinds of data warehouses. Um, of course, you know, just in general these days, we're all generating more data than ever. Um, so, you know, you may find yourself looking at a storage optimized droplet uh, in those situations when you, you have to store a great deal of customer data. Now, our droplets are really much more than just virtual machines. Uh, we've really built in a lot of features that uh, make them much easier to use to manage your applications and workloads. Uh, for example, when you're spinning up a droplet, uh, you can uh, opt to, to specify a sort of base image if you want. Um, you can tap into our, our marketplace of one-click apps, and what that will allow you to do is spin up with a droplet uh, preloaded with configured software, um, we've got over 100 applications in our marketplace, all of them free, a lot of popular open source software. Um, other things that make droplets quite easy to use, uh, within our, our graphical user interface, we have uh, sort of a, a project organization functionality, so you can uh, group droplets for a particular project all, all in one space, uh, collaborate with other members of your team. Um, you can also tag droplets, uh, you know, just giving droplets a label, uh, as you use DigitalOcean, you'll find that uh, tags are, are frequently used, for example, in, in conjunction with things like firewalls. Um, you can also uh, take on-demand snapshots of your droplets. I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit more later. Uh, every droplet that you have has automatically a, a public IPv4 address. Uh, you can choose to enable IPv6 if you like. Um, there's other, other nice features I'll, that I'll, I'll speak to a bit further later on. 
Uh, I mentioned earlier we have a global data center footprint, uh, 13 data centers in total, uh, a couple locations in North America, uh, you know, others still in Europe uh, and Asia. Uh, you know, the, the benefit of having this uh, you know, global data, data center footprint, of course, is that you can run your, your workloads uh, closer to your customers, uh, therefore reducing latency uh, that they experience when using your applications. Now, I mentioned that each of our droplets uh, includes SSD storage uh, just directly attached uh, on the rack uh, along with your CPU and, and memory. Uh, but of course, in many situations, you might find yourself needing additional storage. And that's the reason that we offer our volumes block storage service. Uh, with this, you can uh, attach drives of up to 16 terabytes in size uh, over a you know, super fast Ethernet uh, connection, um, and uh, this is, again, all SSD storage, so very fast performance. Uh, we'll handle replication so that your, your data is redundant in the event of disaster. Uh, as you go ahead and provision uh, one of these block storage volumes, you have the option to uh, automatically format and mount that uh, drive using either the e EXT4 or XFS file system. Um, again, a, a very convenient feature that you can use to, uh, you know, just ensure that you you can add more storage in the event that you do need it. Uh, one thing these days that's uh, of critical importance when running when running applications in the cloud is security, uh, and uh, to help you keep your system secure, we offer a free cloud wall free free cloud firewall service. Uh, and the way this works is it's actually, it actually operates at the network layer. Um, this is a little bit different. You know, you, perhaps you know you can actually uh, use tools like IP tables to uh, configure firewalls directly on a machine. Uh, but the way our cloud firewalls work is uh, it's at the network layer uh, spanning potentially multiple droplets. Uh, you can see in this example here, uh, there's a, a firewall. Uh, that is being uh, applied to any, a group of droplets uh, tagged with this web server tag, um, just allowing uh, traffic on, on particular uh, you know, protocol types and, uh, and ports. Uh, so this is a, a very convenient way uh, to keep multiple machines uh, secure uh, all, in, all in one shot. One other uh, piece of functionality that we provide to help you keep your system secure uh, is the ability to associate SSH keys with your droplets. Uh, now, SSH relies on public key, public key encryption uh, as an authentication mechanism. Um, you can you know, easily uh, create uh, authentication keys on your local machine, paste those into uh, the DigitalOcean user interface, right as, the, right as you're spinning up your, your droplets, um, and uh, you know this makes your droplets much less vulnerable, much less vulnerable uh, to any hacking attempts, um, as there's no longer uh, you know a, a guessable password uh, that uh, someone might be able to use to log into your machines. Another thing that we provide right out of the box uh, with our droplets is a free kind of baseline level of monitoring. Uh, a lot of the, you know, sort of fundamental aspects of, of a machine, just monitor your CPU, your, your memory, your disk, your bandwidth. Um, you can even set alerts, uh, you know, just be notified over email or Slack or even pager duty uh, in the event that uh, certain metrics pass, you know, thresholds that, that might cause concern. Um, of course, you can install additional monitoring software if you want, uh, but this is free and uh, available right out of the box. Uh, last area that, uh, you know, droplets are, are particularly good for is, is just, you know, scaling your systems. Um, you know, this being a cloud service, uh, right as you're initially spinning up a droplet, you'll be asked to uh, basically specify your Droplet plan, uh, the specific uh, characteristics of your machine, uh, you know, the amount of CPUs and memory, et cetera. Um, but later on, should you realize that you actually want to change those specifications, uh, under many circumstances, you can do that, uh, particularly if you're looking to add uh, more CPU memory or storage. It's, it's usually uh, possible to do that with 
you know, just the click of a mouse. Uh, you can even change the type of droplets. So maybe you, you would start off on basic and realize that, you know, maybe you're not getting the, the level of consistent performance that you realize you want. You can shift over to general purpose or, you know, CPU optimized uh, really without any trouble. Uh, of course, there's another way to scale your systems, and that's by adding more droplets. Um, you know, the, the phrase uh, I used to describe, at, you know, adding more virtual machines for a workload is, is horizontal scaling. Um, you know, and if you have multiple droplets, that then creates the problem of, okay, well, how do you route traffic uh, between them? And that's really the, the impetus behind our, our load balancing product. Uh, it's very easy to spin up uh, one of our cloud load balancers. These are network load balancing uh, you know, services that will pass the original request onto, onto the intended uh, droplet destination. Uh, when you, when you uh, set up a load balancer, it's very easy to uh, attach uh, either a, a TL, TL, TLS uh, certificate that you already have, uh, or otherwise you can provision one through the free Let's Encrypt service. Um, our our uh, load balancers also support uh, proxy protocol um, to basically, uh, you know, be able to uh, sort of route requests uh, to your droplets, uh, you know, as, as you intended. Uh, another, uh, you know, critical feature that we provide with our droplets is uh, the ability to take snapshots. So those are on-demand disk images. Uh, you can really capture those at any point in time. Uh, if you'd rather uh, have, uh, you know, weekly backups, uh, you can arrange those quite easily as well. Um, and once you have a, a snapshot or, or a backup, uh, it's then very easy to go ahead and provision a droplet based upon those. Now, one thing we provide ourselves, we pride ourselves on here at DigitalOcean is simplicity, uh, really dating back to our company values since our early days. Uh, our user interface, our API, our command line interface, they're all quite developer friendly, uh, especially if you contrast uh, our experience with what you might find from other cloud providers. Um, you know, we, we definitely uh, try to keep things as simple as we can. Um, and we hope that uh, hope that you see the difference. Uh, our value of simplicity really uh, informs our pricing approach as well. Uh, if you look at our pricing page on our website, you'll see uh, that all of our prices, all of our products, uh, are you know they're, they're basically flat fees per month. Um, that being said, you'll only be char you'll you'll only be charged uh, on an hourly basis. Um, so maybe you want to you know, run your droplets, you know, just a, a couple days of the month. Uh, you'll only be billed for that uh, time that your, your systems are running. Um, and we think that, uh, you know, ultimately uh, our approach makes it much easier for you to understand and predict your pricing. Um, we do have a pricing calculator. In most cases, you won't even need it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and provide a brief demonstration. So here I am in the DigitalOcean control panel. We have a very nice developer-friendly interface. I can simply select my Linux distribution. Uh, if I'd rather spin up a droplet, uh, I can select uh, any of the one-click applications in our marketplace. For example, I can spin up a droplet that has WordPress pre-installed. Uh, I can do uh, you know, application stacks like LAMP. Uh, I can do you know, video conferencing software like Jitsi, uh, all sorts of options. Uh, for this example, I'll just go ahead and spin one up, running the latest version of Ubuntu. Uh, after uh, that, I'll go ahead and select my uh, type of droplet. Uh, do I want one with a uh, shared CPU, or do I want the consistent fast performance uh, that uh, you know I can have with uh, a droplet that has a dedicated CPU? Uh, I'll go ahead and just pick a, a general purpose droplet. Uh, I'll do the one with eight gigabytes and two CPUs. Um, there's 25 gigabytes of storage there. Uh, let's say I want to add even more storage. I can go ahead and attach uh, a, a network uh, attached drive uh, with 100 gigabytes. I'll go ahead and format it with XFS. Um, I pick my data center. I'm in San Francisco. I kind of want something close to home. So I'll just go ahead and spin one up in our SFO3 uh, data center. Uh, I choose uh, whether to uh, run this droplet in uh, the virtual private cloud 
that is basically the default in my account. Uh, I can also use uh, additional ones if I want. Um, I'll just go ahead and put in the default VPC. Uh, I have options uh, and no additional cost to uh, give this droplet an IPv6 address. Uh, I can enable our uh, monitoring software as well. Um, I set the authentication mechanisms, and this is a, a particularly important moment uh, just to try to you know, give your, your droplets uh, the strongest security possible. We definitely recommend that you uh, set them up with SSH. Uh, I've previously uploaded the uh, public key uh, from my uh, MacBook into my account, so I can go ahead and just select that there. Um, give my droplet a name. I'll just say this is Ryan Testing. And uh, I'll go ahead and enable backups as well, just once a, once a week, uh, automatically uh, keep, a, keep a copy of the state of my droplet. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll spin up right now. Um, while it's doing that, you can see the, the sort of progress bar. And uh, I'll just give you a peek at, uh, you know, what it looks like to actually be running a droplet. Um, I recently discovered a way to capture over the air uh, television, uh, you know, transmitted via antennas. Uh, and uh, I'm running uh, something of a cloud DVR of my own on DigitalOcean. Uh, you can get a peek at uh, some of my my viewing habits. Uh, you can see the past week, uh, here is sort of what uh, the bandwidth coming out of my, my own cloud DVR has looked like. Um, you can see that uh, on October 4th, which was a Sunday, I was watching something um, football, uh, of course. Uh, so, uh, anyway, you can see sort of what it looks like to have a, a droplet with real load. Uh, I set up this droplet to have, uh, an, a network attached, uh, block storage to store my recordings. Got a, a hundred gigabytes of recordings there. I'm not actually using all that right now, but, uh, I could, um, and you can see uh, I've taken a snapshot of this droplet in case I ever want to create another cloud DVR. I can just you know, spin one up based on that. Um, so with that, uh, I'll go ahead and, and check and see if my droplet uh, that I just spun up is done. You can see no more progress bar. Uh, my Ryan testing droplet is all ready. Um, so anyway, with all that, I uh, definitely encourage you to, to give our droplets a try. Uh, I hope that you use them. Uh, for both your personal projects uh, as well as uh, you know any number of business applications, uh, we really think uh, you know you can do just about anything you want with these droplets. So you know please give give it a try. Thank you.